trust the expert physicians at Jackson to change your story. Join us for a free bariatric surgery seminar. Alone. This morning, the man who's dedicated his life to saving a language and culture that was almost lost and the complex he's built that contains a vast treasure of storytelling. Aaron Lansky runs the Yiddish Book Center in Western Massachusetts. Over the past 40 plus years, it's gone from an idea that many dismissed to an institution of higher learning in and of itself, a place dedicated to preserving the past while making sure some parts of it are never repeated. Oh my gosh. So what do you think? <laughs> it's a lot. So that's it. It's a whole culture sitting here. Inside a fireproof, climate-controlled basement in western Massachusetts rest more than a thousand years worth of stories. If not for Aaron Lansky, much of it might have been lost forever. The places where many of these books came from, you know, were sort of erased from the map. The, the stories they tell are about a civilization that was almost wiped out. To understand what Lansky does here, the first go back to the first day, the Vashkin Nazi Jewish immigrants arrived in America from Europe and Russia at the turn of the 20th century, speaking a language they used since the 11th century. Initially, they embraced their own culture. I mean, they were still speaking Yiddish. Assimilation, though, was, of course, not the means of Yiddish. Today, the Americans are the most slowly inspecting the libraries in the world. The Yiddish Center still goes out and collects books, but many are also sent. Boxes and boxes every day. This is nice, actually. That is nice. As David Mazauer and Richard Grossman showed us. A lot of children's trees here. This is cute. This is my alphabet. My alphabet. And so we can see it was to teach the different letters. So this is Faith, which is a horse. It's like you're opening a, a someone's house, their mm, life, right. all of it. Absolutely, you... and the, yeah. the variety of books is so interesting. So this is a book about the Talmud. So somebody who had uh, English, Yiddish learning materials, who had stories, who had children's books, also maybe yeah. had a strong interest in religion. And... Now this one is really amazing. So I think you actually will recognize this book. Oh, wow. So this is a more recent book. Yeah. This is a translation of... Um, <laughs> Curious well, George. Curious George, right? Yeah, of course, you know, Curious <laughs> George. Der yeah. George the Curious Yeah. George the Curious One. Yeah. So it's done, actually, um, in transliteration with English letters and then also in Yiddish. And people are using these. People yes. who are raising their children in Yiddish, people who've made a conscious choice to keep the language alive right. in their family are using these books and want more of these books to, to read with their kids. Dear Ma, for sure, this is the earliest memory of, for me of a book that you read to me. Mm. Mine not learning Yiddish is perhaps your biggest disappointment. Wow. You're 85 years young, so here's your chance. Brilliant. Wow. Isn't that great? Isn't that wonderful? These books happen to be what was called a deluxe edition of the collected works of Sholem Aleichem. Sholem Aleichem was one of the most popular Yiddish writers of all time. Shalom Aleichem's works, along with more than 11,000 other titles, are all available online to download for free to anyone. It continues to amaze us and inspire us that these books continue to come to us from all over the world. Susan Bronson is the center's executive director. It does seem like Aaron's done a whole lot more than just collect a whole bunch of books. Oh, yeah. I mean, if we had just collected the books and put them in a dusty vault and closed the door and say, great, we, we saved the books, you know, that would have been nice and it would have been important just to have rescued these artifacts. But everything we've done in 42 years has basically been to try to open those books up, metaphorically speaking and literally, and literally. to a new generation. What makes a language beautiful? Yiddish, to me, is a beautiful language. That includes Yiddish Center fellow and TikToker Cameron Bernstein. Every trend on the internet can connect to Yiddish, and I, having so much amazing access to these books, can just pull from the vast collection of Yiddish knowledge and say, well, it's exactly like this meme. Let me just like reformat it and share what I love so much in an internet language that other people can understand. Aaron Lansky says he hopes, a generation from now, the idea of this place is no longer a big deal, that a long maligned, once nearly destroyed language will never be again. When people say to you, why are you doing this? 
What do you say? I say culture matters. You know, it matters in every way. It matters all over the world that as human beings, we tell stories and we produce artifacts and we produce literature. And that really defines us to a remarkable degree. All those things matter. And if you don't have them, you don't know who you are. From an idea to what he's made, all these. Now, the challenges remain. Only 3% of the, of the Yiddish books so far have been translated to English. They're still working on all that. Because so many people don't know it. You know, my grandmother was the last in our family that spoke Yiddish. And my mom only picked up words. I know a few, but it's not a language that in our family we have anymore. I mean, um, it's proof of exactly how it, how it dies out. Yeah, Cameron, though, the TikToker, I love her. Kids like Cameron trying to pick it up yeah, again, know, yeah. and, and learn it all. And yeah. that's the secret. Well, some foreign foods are softened up for the American palate, but you won't find that in this corner of New York where unapologetic Indian is the mantra and the restaurant's name translates as explosion. It's an authentic taste of the subcontinent. That's next on The Dish. You're watching CBS Saturday.